Hey buddies, Sumnuts Guy here. Hope you're having an awesome day so far. In this video, we are going to teach you guys all about hatcheries. How hatcheries work, how you can get the most value out of them, the easiest way to set them up, uh, and maybe some additional tips and tricks along the way as well. So, first things first, you want to choose the location for your hatchery, um, and understanding some of the mechanics, uh, which I'm about to explain, will help you do so. I chose a mountain biome because if we go track in the water here, it's going to give us a list of the fish that are available in this water. Now, just to tell you guys, number of fish is chunk dependent. So it's based on the chunk. So if this detector is telling me that there is bass, red salmon, and brown trout, that means that they are within this chunk. If I went to a different chunk, it might be different fish and it would be different quantities. Now, in creative mode, they've added, just for you guys, if you have any interest, they've added a bunch of additional information as well. Um, you don't get to see this in survival, but I just want to show you what it looks like in case you do your own testing. So, as you can see, um, there's a bunch of other fish that can spawn at lower Y levels or under different conditions. However, so these are all the ones that are sort of vertically in this chunk. However, if we take it down back into survival we will see that there is only the three types of fish in this chunk. The bass, red salmon, and trout are the only things that can be fished from that. Now, if I were to crouch while I'm tracking, it will give me some additional information as well, just tells me a bit more about the fish, as well as an indication as to how many are there. Light quantity, meager quantity, you know, it's not specific numbers like in creative. What I'm doing now is I'm showing you why I did this in a mountain biome. Go to any other biome ever, and you will see a ginormous list of potential fish available. And they'll be in any quantities from numerous, large quantities, vast, you know, like lots and lots of fish, to maybe just a couple of some of the rarer ones. But to form a hatchery, effectively, what you'll need to do is you will need to clear out every single fish that you do not want to possibly ever fish out of that hatchery. So I've just been holding sneak while I did that tracking. You see it's given us some additional inf information, light quantity, sparse quantity, uh, and uh, it sells, tells us that there's other fish lying at lower altitudes. I also realized that my webcam is covering some of the information there. It doesn't, it's not that important because what I'm saying with words is, is the key factors, really. Um, so this is my hatchery that I set up, and I have fished everything out of here. So I'm going to track in here, and this is going to tell me that there is a red salmon, a decent sized redfish with a hooked jaw in light quantity. So the only fish that's in here is red salmon because I've cleared every other fish out. Now red salmon isn't particularly useful. You probably won't want to do a hatchery for red salmon. Um, honestly, doing some testing for this and setting it all up was kind of a pain in the butt literally just to get the video done. So. I haven't gone so far as to create one that's got all the amazing fish in it and everything because I simply probably won't do that. This isn't even something that I personally will use. However, a lot of you guys that really enjoy fishing will probably use this to quite high value. Now, what we have here is a 3x3 three three fishing area. It has to be 3x3 three three as a minimum to be valid, but you can put a bait box in here like this and this will still work. Now, this is the bait box. This right here is a bait box. And what this does is it allows you to repopulate the fish in your chunk. Baity box, no, bait, bait box. So this allows you to, to um, it's really easy to make, and this allows you to replenish the fish in your chunk. So when I scan, it says light quantity. However, if I put a bait box with the appropriate bait for the fish in question, and I come back and I check it much later, there will be more fish in there. I might say it's in large quantity or, you know, whatever the case may be. So how do you determine what fish you want to create a hatchery for? And how do you locate where to get that fish originally? And then how do you find out what bait it eats to replenish its numbers? So I can fish this chunk to nothing. And then if I fish all the fish out of here, it'll say there's no fish in here. And I'd have to move to a new chunk. That's kind of the basis on how this works. So as an example, we could go to fishing. Fishing at fishing would be fishing made better. And we've got a bunch of different fish here. We've got things like the golden koi. Uh, if you right click, you can use a scaling knife to pull off a golden nugget. Not particularly great, but pearl sardine. You can get ender pearls. These are fished from the void, however. 
You can get things like redstone, mandarin fish is the one that I was looking for. So mandarin fish can give you bottles of enchanting when you use a fillet knife to scale them, which is kind of interesting. So what you want to do is identify what fish you'll want, and then you'll need to find go get those fish. To determine what fish you uh, or where to find the fish and and what bait is required you go to the uh the wiki is the best page i'll link this wiki in the in the description below for you guys but here we have the fish category you want to expand the fish category and find your fish you can always use Control f so if i wanted to find mandarin fish i could type in i could do Control f and then find mandarin fish this spawns in the overworld in jungles so what i'd then go do is i'd go to the overworld in a jungle and I'd look at what bait category. So the bait isn't required, but it means that it's more likely to fish this particular fish instead of the other dozen fish that are probably in the same chunk. So this is bait category eight. Let's quickly show you how to understand the bait system or the, uh, the, the spreadsheets they have here on the wiki because they're really useful, but they can be slightly confusing. So it was bait category eight. Well, it was bait category one, number eight. So we go to bait category one, and we go down to number eight, right? So we're bait category one and we're number eight within that. It's kind of confusing because it says category. We're category one bait, category eight bait. <laughs> okay, but as you can see, that means it goes pretty much everything here, everything in this list except the bottom half. So any of these things can be used as bait for this fish. If you then wanted to be really clever, you go to the jungle, you scan, you see the list of fish, you check the bait categories for the other fish in question as well, and then you try and find a bait that is for the mandarin fish that isn't for the other fish in that same chunk. I hope that makes sense. That'll give you the best chance of fishing up a mandarin fish. So now that you know all of that, we are going to show you how to put a fish in a bucket. It is really simple, um, but it does have to be done quickly. So when you fish out a fish, a fish out of fish, when you fish out of fish, um, the fish will be alive for a very short period of time. And what you need to do is put that live fish into a crafting station with a water bucket. And uh, then you'll get a fish in a bucket. It's really simple. If you get your fish out, you fish, fish lands on the floor, you pick the fish up, say this is the fish, you put the fish in the water bucket, in the crafting station, and then you pull out your fish in a bucket. It will look like, it'll look like this. Look, look, and it'll tell you what fish is in that bucket as well, which is quite nice. And uh, you need to do it quickly so that it's still alive when you do so. And then when you get back to your hatchery, you simply right click with that bucket. Here, you simply right click with that bucket into the water like that. And you've now put that fish into the hatchery. And if you use your scanner, it will tell you that fish is there. Now, with hatcheries, it doesn't need to be biome specific. So you can put any fish in here. You can put the pearl koi. You can put anything you want, any, literally any, any fish you want in here. And that's where the value comes in, okay? So repopulating the species um, of fish, it takes a long time. It takes quite a lot of time. So once you've got the correct bait in there, say spider's eye is a, very, is a valid bait for many fish. Um, obviously check the bait like we just did. And it does take a lot of time for the numbers to build up. However, each fish, each type of fish, the number, the speed is mutually exclusive. Anyway, they can all go at the same speed alongside each other together. If you have a dozen different types of fish, it's not going to slow down the production of each fish. If you have a dozen types, they're all going to be reproducing as fast as if there was only that one fish in there, if that makes sense. Additionally, the uh, it's essentially a 24-7 uh, reproduction because it has a catch-up system. If the chunk is unloaded, when you come back to reload that chunk or when that chunk gets loaded in, uh, it will do a catch-up uh, calculations to catch up the reproduction for you. So it is technically running 24-7. So to get the most value out of a hatchery, you want as many different types of fish in there as possible because they all reproduce at the same rate no matter how many different types are in there. 
and you want to make sure you keep the bait box full. And uh, yeah, man, that's kind of it. It's it's if you get a bunch of different fish in there, it can be really useful. Say, for example, you know you're you're stuck in a winter or a summer inside your base because it's you know too hot or cold to go outside. Maybe you get a mob event. Maybe it's a blood moon. Maybe you just feel like chilling out and relaxing, watching a TV show and still getting some value here in RL Craft. Whatever the case may be, this is quite a nice way that you can really comfortably gain some quite quite uh, quite solid resources. I mean, Mandarin Fish XP bottles as well, so XP farms, whatever the case may be. Now, it's not going to be an amazing farm for any particular individual thing because it is quite slow for them to reproduce. You're not going to get a bajillion XP bottles. But if you have a bunch of different fish in there, you are going to get a bunch of really useful materials over time. You just need to make sure that you're careful not to completely overfish each individual type of fish. You need to make sure there's always at least two types of the same fish for them to be able to reproduce, of course. Alrighty, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, consider subscribing. I go live on my Twitch channel pretty much every day, except Monday and Friday I usually take for editing. I also run an RLCraft 2.9 server. You guys would be welcome to join. All you have to do is jump on the Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv forward slash some nuts guy, earn 3,000 channel points, unlock the whitelist of the channel point redemptions, and then you'll be able to join us. Alrighty, guys. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care.